Recipe 8, identify inverse functions. On this, to be honest with you, there's a couple ways that we could do it, but because, you know, it's IXL, and if you get it wrong, you're going to be reading, you know, what you did wrong, I guess I'm just going to stick with the way that they taught it. So what we're going to do, we're going to identify inverse functions. So what, what an inverse function is, is... First off, it has to be a function, which means every x just has one y. But if it's an inverse function, the equation of the inverse function would be every y goes to one x. Basically, it kind of flip-flops, and it's a one-to-one -one in function. I know that doesn't make any sense to you. But anyway, so what we're going to do to figure out if these are inverse functions, we are going to... Every time, right? Okay, we are going to do first off, I don't know what we're going to do because this is not working for me. Off, off, off. I don't want that. Okay, so what we're going to do, we are going to do f of g of x and see if it ends up equaling x. Then we're going to do g of f of x and see if it, 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 it equals x. If both of these equal x, then it is an inverse function. So I'm going to need a lot, lot of room here. So let's see what I can do. I'm going to blow these up right here and I'm going to try to there we go scroll right. so first off is f of g so I'm going to put this into this so it'll be negative 1 over 4 times x and what's x negative 4x a negative times a positive negative times a negative is a positive the fourth of 4 is 1 so that's going to be 1x, so that worked. Now we're going to do g of f. g is negative 4x, and what's going to go in here? Negative 1 over 4x. So g over 4, negative times negative is a positive. 4 times 1 fourth is 4 times 1 fourth is 1, and so that's just 1x also. So both of them equaled x, so this is an inverse function. Now, just because f of g was x doesn't automatically mean that g of f is x. I've seen it happen. As a side note, it doesn't happen very often. So if you get x on the first one and you want to take a chance and just say yes as an answer instead of having to do the bottom one, you know, float your boat, see what happens. But it has to both be x for it to be yes. Uh, go on to the next one. f of g. So f is x minus 8. What is f? I'm sorry, what is g? Negative 5 x minus 4, so that would be negative 5x minus 12, and that does not equal x, so this is definitely not an inverse function. Once you get one, no, you don't have to do both of them. f of g, your f is x to the third minus 7, your g is the cube root of x minus 5. That 5 and that 7 is never going to go to 0. Okay? So, just say no. <laughs> just say no. We're not going to cube that. It gets nasty and everything. Um, yeah. Good on this one. So, negative 1 over 5, cube root of x, which is negative 125 
x to the third. All right, now, the cube root means what times what times what equals the inside. So I'm going to bring that in this negative one-fifth. What times what times what equals negative 125? Negative 5. And what times what times what equals x to the third? x. So this right here is the simplification of that right there. So what's a negative times a negative? A positive and a fifth of 5 is 1. So this does equal x. So the first part checks out. So we have to do the bottom one. So negative 125, x to the third, negative 1 over 5, cube root of x. Negative 125. So negative 1 over 5 times negative 1 over 5 times negative 1 over 5 is negative 1 over 125. And then the cube root being cubed cancels each other out, which is that. A negative over a negative is a positive, and 125 over 125 is 1, so that does equal x, so this would be a yes. I'm not looking wrong. It just turned... So, 5x minus 8, all of this is going to go in there. So 1 over 5x plus 8 over 5. Distribute. 5 times 1 over 5 is 1x. 5 times 8 over 5 is 8. And then we bring the minus 8 down. 8 minus 8 is 0. So that equals x. So f of g worked. Now we're going to do g of f. 1 over 5. x plus 8 over 5, 5x minus 8, 1 over 5 times 5 is 1, so that would be 1x, one, 1 over 5 times negative 8 is negative 8 over 5, bring the plus 8 over 5 down, those cancel out, so we're left with x, so that checks, so that's a yes, don't worry about that, that's just a definition, it can only work if that was true, but it's not part of being the problem. So the square root plus 6, what's going to go into the, under the square root? x minus 6 squared. A square root and a square cancels each other out because it's the whole thing being squared. And it's the whole thing being square rooted. So we're left with x minus 6 plus 6, which is x. And that checks. And then we have to do the bottom one. So x squared x minus 6 squared, but what's x? The square root of x plus 6. Well, let me kind of simplify that for you. Here's your x, and that's what we're plugging into that. And so the minus 6 and the squared is still going to be there. And so what happens is the 6 and the negative 6 cancel out, so you're left with the square root of x squared, and something squared and then square rooted gets you what's underneath it, and that checks out. So that's going to be a yes. That's it.